Football season. Is there such a thing as a good football comic book? Well, no, there's absolutely not. But there is an absolutely terrible football comic. NFL Super Pro was the horrible brainchild of Marvel Comics teaming up with the NFL in 1991. Nobody cared about it. It was a very bad book that somehow lasted a full year, 12 issues. I don't know how that happened. And you'd think that Marvel would have known better because they'd actually tried a football comic book before. That's right, Kickers Incorporated. The idea by the writer was to do something tongue in cheek, but Marvel had just started a new superhero universe called the New Universe that they wanted to have be super realistic. It led to a very subpar comic book about a team of NFL players, I guess, or off-brand pro football players that became superheroes. Wasn't good. A couple years later, Marvel's back at it. Supposedly, the writer, Fabian Nicieza, only agreed to do it because he could get free football tickets to go see the Jets, and he wanted to see the Jets that season. I mean... I don't blame him for that. If Marvel came to me and was like, hey, do you want to do, you know, a Microsoft Surface Pro comic book? I'd be like, yeah, I've got a lot of great ideas for it, actually. Um, what's that, an Apple iWatch? Or, sure, I can think of a way to turn that into a comic book. So I don't blame Fabian, but it wasn't a very good comic book. You know what? Let's go out and find the issue first, and then we'll get into it some more. I've been driving all around the Pacific Northwest today, trying all the different comic book stores I know, trying to find a physical copy of NFL Super Pro. Not easy. Uh, now I'm in this little town called Federal Way uh, at a comic book store apparently called Fantasium Comics and Games. Never been here before. It's the end of the day. It's the last place I can think to check. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I found it. I'm not exactly 100% happy that I physically own this. But this is a comic book that because of the NFL license, you can't get it on the Marvel Unlimited app. So I had to pay for a physical copy in order to review it. Uh, wow, this thing is full of two tropes that are battling. One is how many football, pro football references can we have? And the other is how many just stupid, groan-worthy, just terrible, dumb things can we put in a single comic book? You know what? Let's see which has more. We're just going to read the comic book. We're going to try to have fun. And then afterwards, I'm going to see if I have what it takes to be a, a pro football player. I'll see if I can uh, kick a field goal or throw a pass. I'm not an athlete. It's going to be embarrassing. I'll just tell you that now. All right, so let's read the comic book. Right off the bat on the cover, we have a really forced pro football reference saying he went from sacking quarterbacks to tackling crime. There are a lot of puns in this. Just, just know that up front. We're going to get through it together. It also says that it's a collector's item. I don't know how a first issue can already claim that it's a collector's item. That seems a little uh, presumptuous. And it's guest starring Spider-Man because they had to be sure that at least some people bought this issue. I'm going to let Spider-Man and the collector's issue thing slide for now, but saying that tackling pun on the cover, I mean, come on, no, we're not letting that slide. On page one, we see a man in crosshairs. This is Murtog, and the exposition tells us that he's being targeted because he's a criminal that uh, cooked the books, but he got caught and he's about to turn state's evidence. He's about to basically rat on the people that he used to work with in the criminal underworld. And then on page two, he's still in the crosshairs as he gets his car from a valet, pays the valet, and even starts to drive away. Note to assassin, at some point, you are obligated to pull the trigger. You don't just watch your target all day. In fact, the assassin takes so long 
that our titular hero, Super Pro, has time to stand in front of the gun. So we get a nice prominent NFL logo shot really early on. And the guy apparently knows Super Pro's name, even though this is his first issue. Why is he sort of famous with this guy already? Never explained. The assassin knows who Super Pro is. Super Pro tries to talk tough, but all he does is sort of deliver lame puns. It's nice to be recognized by your fans, isn't it? How about a personal autograph? Fans and autographs, that's pretty forced right off the bat. And by the way, look at how Super Pro is knocking out the assassin. He doesn't just punch him with a fist. No, he's, he's shoving off. He's Super Pro. There's actually no referees around. So if you see an assassin, you're actually allowed to punch them. You don't have to shove off nice and clean. You're not going to be uh, fouled out. You're not going to mess anything up for your team. Super Pro takes quite a bit of time delivering exposition, and it's important to the story. Not necessarily that believable as what a real person would do in this situation, but let's see what he has to say. Tim Pressman is an offensive tackle for the LA Raiders, who's accused of having gambling ties to your boss, San Zionare. John Murtaugh is the only one who can prove Pressman is innocent. All right, so that's the plot. An NFL player, is being essentially framed for doing something or other, and this guy Murtaugh has evidence NFL Super Pro wants to uh, establish the innocence of an LA Raiders player. By the way, that dates it, huh? Because now it's the LA Rams, but then again, this is 1991, it's a long time ago. Before NFL Super Pro can get any real confession out of this assassin, he hears a gunshot, spins around, oh my God, Murtaugh has been murdered by somebody else. Apparently the valet has murdered Murtaugh. Super Pro just knocks out the assassin, or at least he says he's knocking him out, but it looks more like he just gave him a shove. I don't know if a shove really knocks somebody out, but maybe that's one of NFL Super Pro's ill-defined superpowers. Ugh, and the worst thing about NFL Super Pro is basically his terrible, terrible superhero patter. His banter is just garbage. Look at him. He already made a joke just one page ago about, hey, do you want my autograph? He recycles the same exact joke. Look at him. Your good friend down there might want my autograph too. Dude, nobody wants your autograph. Dear reader, we're going to have to work together to figure out what's happening here because Super Pro grabs a hold of just lines. What is he grabbing a hold of? He's jumping down to the car now, then he's holding on to some lines, talking about how he's got to manage it just right. Are those power lines? Did he just sort of yank a line out of the artwork? What's he doing? Apparently Super Pro has plenty of time to just sort of talk to himself as he's jumping from a roof all the way down to a car, talking about how he's got to time it just right, and how he's worried about the, the valet hitting the brakes. But then he lands on the roof, and he exclaims, touchdown. Because of course he does. Because of course he does. NFL Super Pro just does nothing but the most cliched, obvious banter possible. And whenever possible, this is gonna remind you, football. Look at this assassin. The most bland guy ever. He's just a guy with a gun. And he says, what the f was that? Who the f are you? Get the f off of the car. Uh, yeah, this is the cursing assassin. That's what I'm calling him. He doesn't really have any sort of a code name like Bullseye or Deadshot or anything like that. So his defining characteristic is he just is always cursing. Very bland, totally appropriate as a villain for the very bland NFL Super Pro. In fact, Super Pro comments on it. He says, what a mouth on this guy. I'm going to have to wash it out with my fist. Gross, what are you talking about? How do you clean somebody's mouth out with your fist? I don't even understand what that means. That's not a phrase. That's not a pun. That's just a weird thing to say. I'm going to clean your mouth out with my fist. And then the valet shoots at him point blank range. Apparently the assassin somehow missed. I don't understand how. We just see in the rear view mirror that somehow NFL Super Pro has gotten behind the car. The assassin curses some more. I, I don't understand what Super Pro's powers are. Is he super fast? Can he teleport? Can he just sort of make strings appear out of nowhere and hang on them? I, I don't know. 
it's it's semi explained later in this issue. Uh, ugh, he's just so boring. I do not like Super Pro. Oh, and here's Spider Man. He just happens to be in town to sort of cover some news. By the way, this is taking place in Los Angeles. Spider Man, of course, is famously from New York, but he is a reporter, so it makes sense for him to sometimes be in other cities. Uh, and he seems very impressed with this NFL Super Pro that he's heard of. Again, I don't know how he's heard of him. Also, Spider-Man, why are you so impressed? All he did was jump onto a car and then fall right off. He hasn't caught the guy. He hasn't done anything that impressive. You can jump down onto a car. There's lots of superheroes that can jump down onto a car and then not catch the bad guy. Spider-Man starts to wonder if he should lend a hand. And then he says, oh, I guess that's why they pay me the big bucks at back at the Daily Bugle. Not because this is 1991 and we're gonna get any sort of dated reference that, that sort of counted as humor at the time. And by the way, this isn't the only time this comic used not. That was a recurring joke throughout the run. Take a look. In the same panel where Spider-Man is doing his not joke, out loud by the way, just in case anyone's in earshot, uh, there's just some sort of random Hooker, I want to say. I'm not sure. She just doesn't look necessarily like a professional of any kind. And the artwork is done in such a way that it's making it look like her boobs are glowing. So Super Pro has completely failed to stop the assassin, but Spider-Man's a little bit more of a professional, so he tags it with a spider tracer. That way he can track it later. At least one of these guys knows what he's doing. Super Pro's method of getaway is, is just so lame. He doesn't fire a grappling hook or a web line and he can't fly, he doesn't have a cool Batmobile, he has a bright green van with his co-worker uh, in real life, his, his real life alter ego has a co-worker. This guy just picks him up in a green van on the side of the street. Anyone can see it. In fact, Spider-Man is taking pictures of this, so presumably he has the license plate there. Uh, this is in the days before everybody had a cell phone camera, but then again, it would be pretty easy for anybody to just be like, hey, that superhero that just jumped off the roof uh, got shot at and jumped into a bright green van? Yes, officer, I did take a moment to note the license plate because I figured, you know, this is a crime that somebody might want to investigate. Yeah, it was pretty easy to, to follow him, officer. While jumping into the van, Super Pro laments, I'm looking forward to the day when I feel confident enough in this gig to deal with the police without worrying about being labeled a vigilante or something. Hey, Super Pro, you are a vigilante. You're taking the law into your own hands. Just own it. Just own it, buddy. We're close to halfway through the book and we're only now being told that Super Pro's real name is Phil Grayfield. Pretty bland name for a pretty bland guy. He used to be in the NFL. Now he's a reporter. And uh, this guy that's picking him up in the van is Ken. He's, he's Phil's cameraman. Very exciting stuff. And uh, I guess at some point, uh, Ken figured out who Super Pro was, and so now they work together. Phil explains to Ken, by the way, that Tim Pressman used to be a guy that he knew in the NFL, and says that, you know, he may have been cocky, but he certainly wasn't a criminal, and so he's out to clear his name. You'd think with these amazing powers, he might want to stop bank robberies or stuff, uh, you know, maybe let the courts decide who's innocent and guilty, but he's going to go out of his way to uh, clear, clear this guy's name. What a hero. And this comic, uh, he, here's an indication of how little everybody cared. Uh, in the second to last panel on this page, the word balloon's tail, I'm pretty sure it's not going to the right person. Because Phil has been explaining to Ken that, you know, no, he thinks Tim's innocent, etc., etc. This is the dialogue. You can't ruin a man's life because of gossip or innuendo. Supposedly, Murtaugh had a tape that cleared Pressman of any wrongdoing. He was going to present it as evidence at tomorrow's grand jury hearing. Now, if Phil is the one explaining all this to Ken, I don't think Ken would sort of all of a sudden agree with him and then tell him stuff that he already knew. It, it's, it's just a screw-up. It's a screw-up. We're getting a lot more... Uh, 
just stupid groaners. Yeah. These, these references are forced, but there's a lot more stupid stuff going on. They call it a night, and Phil calls his girlfriend. She's also a reporter. Of course, Phil does, you know, field reporting. Uh, he works for, I don't know what, it's not ESPN, but he works per covering the NFL. She covers news. And apparently, she walks around her house in lingerie while eating cookies. Uh, I'll tell you something. Beautiful women do not walk around eating lots of cookies. It's very rare. They actually probably eat healthy. And they probably don't need to impress anybody when they're at home alone. So it's pretty unlikely she'd be running around in lingerie and eating cookies. That's, that's a little hard to believe. Oh, and then just to sort of add to his heroic, amazing skills, uh, Phil tasks his girlfriend with doing some research on Tim Pressman and this crime boss, Sal Zianor, San Zianor. I can't even remember his name because I just do, don't care. I'm not even going to flip back a couple pages to figure it out. Who cares? Some crime boss. He tasks her with doing all the research. You figure it out. So here we are, a little more than halfway through the issue, and we get a one-page flashback that explains his origin. It's the worst origin of any Marvel Comics superhero that had their own title. It's terrible. First, Phil starts stressing about whether his girlfriend is a part-time gal pal, and he really spends a lot of time thinking about it. Look at this. He's talking about his girlfriend, and he thinks, always have to go for that last jab and an Emmy Award. That's why she's my part-time gal pal. Hmm, yuppies may be dead, but the problems we have coming up with catchwords for our relationships endure. Uh, yeah, you know what? If this is what Phil needs to fill his time thinking about, what he is going to call his girlfriend, no wonder he has extra time to be a superhero. Most of us have work and a social life. This guy sits around and goes like, hmm, part-time gal pal. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's a good term. Uh, hmm. Dude. Do some research, clear this pressman's name, and just get on with your life. I'm sorry, I really dislike this guy. I find him very unlikable. Then Phil starts reminiscing from that point about how he got his superpowers, which involved him being a field reporter. We got that. Who went to see an NFL collector. And the NFL collector had designed the NFL Pro Super Suit, as a lot of us collectors do, you know. Some of us collect comics, and in our part-time, we design Iron Man armor. This guy liked football, so he designed a new super suit uh, that enhanced people's abilities. Basically, it's sort of an Iron Man suit that looks like a terrible football uniform. Some thugs broke in to steal the merchandise, caused a fire, and apparently these collectibles must have been made of some weird stuff because they liquefied, the chemicals got on Phil, and they gave him superpowers. So, who knows, first of all, what happened to this collector? Not mentioned at all. Did he die? Did he escape? Who knows? Not mentioned. Not important at all. But it seems like he, in the same, same event, he got two superpowers. He's got the superhero suit that is sort of like armor, and then he also got chemicals splashed on him that gave him super strength and some other ill-defined abilities. So, uh, yeah, I think you can see how lazy this was. They were like, ah, let's just give him two superpowers. I can sort of understand why the collector would put an NFL logo on this suit, because, you know, who knows what he was planning on using it for, but it was in his own home, that's fine. When, <laughs> when Super Pro took it, he just takes it, by the way. Again, like, what happened to the owner? I don't know. But he takes the suit. Did he just assume that it was going to be totally okay to run around town fighting crime using the NFL's logo? I mean, <laughs> if this guy had just, like, slapped, I don't know, some sort of <laughs> laptop on, onto it somehow, and it had the Apple logo, would he just be running around town with an Apple logo, or... Or, like, you know, an iron-on patch for, like, <laughs> I don't know, NASCAR or something? I, it, it's bizarre. We understand, of course, why Marvel wanted to use the NFL logo, but in story, it makes no sense. You wouldn't run around 
fighting crime wearing the NFL logo. The NFL would hire a team of lawyers, hire extra police officers, and take you down. And of course, in this memory, uh, the first guy uh, Super Pro went up against, it, it's football related, of course, it was a steroid abuser that turned him basically into the Hulk. It couldn't have been just a group of people that were stealing, it had to be a steroid abuser. I'm just sort of devil up. <clears throat> Meanwhile, that valet ha is reporting to Sanzionare and saying, you know, hey, you were f***ing right. I got that uh, evidence in Murtaugh's breast pocket. Just like you said. More casual cursing. Heaven forbid we give this guy an actual personality. The valet explains what happened, and his description is pretty bizarre. Look at this. Guy in a fucking costume. One of those kind. Think he calls himself Super Pro. He took out the secondary shooter. Almost nailed me. Uh, there's so much to unpack here. One of those kind, I mean, just, just call him a superhero, I guess, or a vigilante. It's kind of weird to say those kind. It's, it's not like it's illegal. Uh, hush, hush, oh, oh, don't say their name or they might appear. Oh, oh. And then he seems to know the guy's name is Super Pro too. What, did Super Pro get some business cards made up? Or has he been dropping his own name when he does his field reporting? Like. That was quite a catch, and uh, you know who else is catching people is that super pro. He's catching a lot of criminals these days. That would probably make uh, his coworkers start to ask questions, actually. But seriously, how does super pro get his name out there? This is the days before Facebook and social media. I, I, I would love to know how everybody knows that his name is super pro. He talks about wanting to avoid the police. He hasn't done any interviews, but people know who he is. Finally. This assassin says he almost nailed me. Well, no, actually he didn't even come close. He jumped on your car, you shot at him, and he like, that was it. That was it. He didn't even really come close. He jumped after you once, and you scared him off with two bullets. Uh, he's not that impressive. Cut to the next day where Tim Pressman is going to give a press conference, explain that he's innocent, and uh, look who's covering it. Both Peter Parker and Phil Grayson, they look at each other, sort of exchange knowing looks, and don't say a single word to each other. Well, enjoy it, because that's the extent of their team up. That's right, even though Spider-Man is emblazoned upon the cover and he's in this issue, these guys never talk to each other. They never team up and, you know, punch the same guy. This is the, their meeting. Just sort of looking at each other and going like, oh, hmm, that guy looks interesting. In fact, we get another forced football, pro football reference as Phil Grayson goes, oh, looks like this guy recognized me. Must be a fan. Also, Peter says, I think I saw that guy on ESPN. So, another forced reference. Pressman's entire press conference is basically just him saying, I deny the allegations that I have anything to do with San Zionari. Uh, I'm less interested in what he has to say, or rather, how brief it is, than I am with this haircut. I mean, I know it's the 90s, but I don't recall ever seeing anybody with a haircut like this. So Peter Parker has his spider sense go off, which warns him of imminent danger. He now has time to change into his Spider-Man costume, get up onto the roof, and there's that valet as an assassin with a rifle aimed at Pressman. That's right, his spider sense went off so far in advance, Spider-Man had a few minutes to basically change, scout out the location, find the bad guy, and the bad guy, for some reason, again, hasn't taken his shot. Uh, Sanzionari, the people he's hiring, he needs to tell them, uh, eventually you need to pull the trigger. Spider-Man is pretty well known for his banter, for his jokes, when he's going after criminals. Here's the one he cracks in this issue as he goes after this sniper. He says, uh, you're only supposed to be shooting at people on the freeways. Wow, Spider-Man, can't wait to hear your rape jokes next. Of course, the assassin swears again and he starts to run away and Spider-Man says, I'm gonna have to wash your mouth out with web. That's right. In the same issue, two separate superheroes have used the I'm gonna have to wash your mouth out with blank joke. So Spidey isn't even doing original material. 
the freeway joke was bad, but at least it was original. Now he's cribbing off of Super Pro, and that's arguably worse. Spider-Man, of course, tries to catch him with a web line, and he completely misses. Not only does he miss, he misses as the guy tries to jump between two roofs and the guy plunges to his death. When have you ever, ever seen Spider-Man miss? Especially from like 10 feet away. I've never seen that, but it's apparently what it takes to move the story forward because this story does not require Spider-Man to be in it at all. So he's basically completely incompetent. So obviously, like, you know, a man falls to his death right across the street from a press conference. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's happening? What's happening? You know, the police show up, etc. Now, Phil and Ken just have the most bizarre conversation you can imagine. Look at this. Phil goes, that guy who fell, that was the man who killed Murtaugh last night. Now more than ever, Pressman is going to be linked to Sanzianare. And Ken goes, now more than ever, Sanzianare is going to try to have Pressman killed. What are they talking about? Yeah, I understand an assassin just fell to his death and that's, that's news, that's dramatic, etc. But how does that tie Pressman to Sanzianare even more? Like, nobody knows, it's not like this assassin is going around with, like, you know, a Sanzianare logo emblazoned on his chest. That's more NFL Super Pro's deal. Spider-Man finally decides to follow up his lead on that spider tracer, takes him to Sanzianare's mansion. He checks out, apparently, one room, and then says, hmm, well, no evidence. So, either Spider-Man is lazy or incompetent, but either way, he gets absolutely nothing done. Nobody's at Sanzianari's place. Of course not, because they're going to kill Pressman, so they're not going to be at Sanzianari's place. Super Pro is the only one smart enough to realize that Pressman is still a target. Super Pro goes to uh, Pressman's house, where a bunch of very generic assassins are getting ready to kill Pressman. Super Pro jumps on top of them, and you'd think he'd say something like, you know, it's first down, or, I don't know, uh, uh, time for some uh, offensive interference, or something like that, right? Like, he'd have a football reference. No, he drops a poker reference. Look at him. He says, sorry, boys, this time the odds favor the house. I, I don't understand why a poker reference is in a football comic. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. It's not necessarily overly cliché. Super Pro just wails on these ninjas for a few pages. It's a pretty one-sided fight. The, but, you know, it's the guy's first issue, so we've got to make him look kind of impressive. He's just punching them and kicking them and has some really terrible banter, like, uh, Hey, you're a big one, aren't you? And uh, shouting that his name is Super Pro, even though I think they already knew that. A laser sight lines up on Pressman, and then things get very confusing. You'd think that, okay, maybe that's a sniper, or he's at least got a target on some sort of a pistol or a rifle. Super Pro knocks Pressman out of the way, but on the next page, the next panel, there's a huge explosion, and it seems to be hurting the ninja. I don't, I really don't understand what's just happened. Um, I've looked at this many times, there's no dialogue that explains it. Uh, in the next panel, uh, Super Pro says, Explosive shells are good for scaring and intimidating people, but they're not the smartest thing to use in close quarters combat. So, maybe, presumably, this guy just sort of blew himself up? But it's not like Super Pro blocked it or anything. Did Super Pro not even need to, to knock Pressman out of the way? Was this guy just going to blow himself up no matter what? I, I can't tell. I just can't tell. Whew. Now Super Pro kind of embarrasses himself. This is, this is degrading. He says, In my short time spent doing this costume jammy thing, I've discovered that fists and feet work just fine to take out your type of scum. And he's doing some sort of weird super kick that's kicking a guy straight up into the air. Or maybe he's balancing him on his foot and just sort of doing some sort of balancing... Uh, move, uh, some, some Cirque du Soleil type thing, I, I can't tell. Costume jammy, I mean, that's so diminishing. Uh, I understand that this comic was probably aimed at bringing in NFL readers, football fans, to comic books, but you're not going to win them over when you make superheroes sound extra ridiculous by saying they wear costume jammies. I mean, and besides which, 
you know, Super Pro is essentially wearing just a football uniform. I mean, he's got big shoulder pads on it, and he's got like a little bit of a different helmet, but it's not that different. I mean, are we supposed to call NFL players costume jammy players? No, they wouldn't like that. That's stupid. The fight ends with Super Pro delivering probably his absolute worst tough guy talk. The final assassin, the ninja guy, says, I give, I give, and Super Pro responds with, No, you received a pounding, that is. Oof. <laughs> I imagine the ninja just started laughing at that point. I mean, he knew he was going to get punched, but he's just like, Yeah, okay, pal, I received a pounding. <laughs> and then he gets knocked out. But you know what? At least he had the last laugh. Come on, Super Pro. <laughs> if you're going to do this full time, Think out these tough guy lines ahead of time, or even just like watch a Dirty Harry movie and write them down and be like, oh yeah, I'll use that one next time. Last page, Super Pro knocks out that assassin and he says, that's so your boss, Sanzianare, knows that he's lost the home field advantage. Spider-Man is just sort of lurking in the, in the trees, watching all of this and saying like, ah, oh, I guess they didn't need me after all, but uh, I got some good picks for the bugle. I got some picks for my job. And then Pressman thanks Super Pro. He's like, you know, thanks for saving my life. And he's like, you know what? No problem. And I think that this assassination attempt is really gonna make you look better. So, you know, you're gonna come out okay, buddy. Whatever, great ending. <laughs> uh, and then next issue, next issue, quick kick. Right to the last, not even panel, it's past the panel and, and we've got one of these quick kick. That's right, he was an NFL kicker who decided to become a ninja. And he calls himself Quick Kick. Super Pro had terrible enemies. Uh, he had Instant Replay, who could uh, go back in time a few seconds to redo things. He had Quick Kick. He had uh, a guy named Kabuki back. It was basically part of a whole team of evil pro football players. Uh, and then they started really running out of ideas of evil uh, NFL players. Uh, he started playing basketball. He ended up getting four sidekicks called the Happy Campers. These were middle-aged men who got superpowers. Uh, they were terrible. Uh, one guy was called Girth. Ugh. And his real name was Tubby. Uh, that's a little offensive, I guess. Uh, his power was that he could move his belly around. He could hit people with his belly. That's kind of gross. Uh, the next guy uh, was a Korean guy who got really good at math. Uh, offensive. Uh, he called himself the calculator, and he could calculate probabilities so that he could do things better. He could calculate things really fast in his head. So that's offensive. And finally, there was an accountant named something like Penny Man or Pennywise or something, and of course, he could literally shoot money, shoot pennies out of his hands. I'm surprised they didn't call him, you know, uh, Mr. Jew. Uh, terrible, just terrible. Uh, this comic, oof, it just limped. It limped to its finale. Uh, nobody liked it. I don't know how it lasted 12 issues. Uh, all right, so... Clearly, there were way more just groaners, because nobody cared about this comic. It was just stupid. It was, nobody cared. I'm not blaming them. They just didn't care. Uh, there were still, this is a fair amount of forced pro football references. This is a lot. Like, if this was just a, if, if it was just this that we were looking for for tropes, that'd be a lot. But look at all of this stuff. All right. But you know what? I can talk shit. Let's see how well I can play. I'm going to go to a field, I'm going to try throwing a football, and I'm going to try kicking a field goal. Uh, I have very little faith that I'm going to be able to do it, but I can try. I love watching football. Let's see if I can do it myself.
All right, I could only get enough distance to uh, finally get that field goal from about the 10 yard line. So uh, no football team, not even a high school team is gonna be uh, looking for me as a place kicker anytime soon. But um, wow, what a ridiculous issue. You have to laugh at it, you have to, because otherwise you're gonna be crying. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this look at a very strange comic. But you know what, maybe not the most forced uh, synergy I've ever seen at Marvel Comics, that I'd probably reserve for Combo Man, the superhero based on the Combo's snack. And look at this guy's design. No thought went into that at all. They were just like, Combo, sure, he just combines a bunch of stuff we already have. Done. Check, please. <laughs> so, sometimes the, the, the big teams can still phone it in. I've got a great episode in store for you guys next week. And until then, keep reading comics.